Hello again, this is Craig from the PrepperStop.com. Uh, another short video. This one's going to be a little more fun this time. Uh, we got a lot of radioactive sources and a lot of people on YouTube always try to show off what they have. And I've got every example you can probably think of just about. Uh, but I also want to demonstrate and introduce the Mazur uh, Geiger counter with a pancake probe on the back. This is what we're going to be using for this demonstration. Have these for sale at the Prepper Stop as well. It's a nice unit. I actually go all over the country and take long-term background radiation readings with every city I go to. I turn it on and leave it on all night, and in the morning gives me an average of the background radiation of that location. And I enter it on the website, forbiddenknowledge.info, go to the radiation page, and you'll see all the readings I've done, at least at the time of this recording, I'm continuing to do it. It's actually pointless to do because I'm trying to prove to everybody there is no radiation coming here from Japan. Nobody wants to believe me. But I do it anyway to try to prove a point, and they just want to listen to the Alex Joneses of the world who tell us that we're all going to die. So I have to try to counter the crap, and that's what I'm trying to do with, with my TV show and my uh, information I present. But anyway, we're going to demonstrate some elect some. Uh, you can do data logging with this. You can hook it up to computer uh, peaks and lows. Uh, there's a lot of different functions. It's an expensive unit, but it actually is a really good unit. Um, it's on right now, and although you may not be able to hear it that well, we're going to be quiet when we're trying to test some things. Uh, basically. People are kind of surprised by some of the things. Uh, this is a rock that I have on my table all the time, uranium ore. I, I'm handling with my bare hands. Why would I do that? Well, it's very low radioactivity. Again, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's very low radioactivity. It's a rock. It hasn't been refined yet. It's just, it's got some uranium in it, but it's mostly a rock. It, ha it has to be pulverized. It has to be processed to get into a state where you can actually measure much. It's just a little bub background radiation. Okay. Um, but, for instance, uh, this plate, Fiesta Ware, you've heard of it, uranium oxide, quite a bit hotter. Why? It's more refined. It's not from rock. This has been refined probably a thousand times hotter than the rock. That surprises people. This is the original way to nuke your food, right? Late 50s, early 60s, discontinued, I think, sometime in the 60s. Thorium. Uh, lantern mantles, Coleman lights, lantern mantles, moderately radioactive. I wouldn't use these today. This is probably about the most dangerous thing I believe at my table. If you were to burn this, you're going to get alpha and beta particles uh, out of the burning of it. And if you're in an enclosed area, like maybe a tent, uh, you might actually get more particles in your system, which you probably won't want to do. So out of all the things, I would have no problem eating off that plate. I'd probably have a problem breathing the fumes off of the lantern mantles. They don't make these anymore. These haven't been made since the 60s either, at least in the United States. Um, you can find them, uh, presumably, they say, from other countries. There's, there's another one here. Um, but they, they don't make them anymore like that. They make lantern mantles, but not with the thorium in them anymore. Uh, radium was another popular one. Remember the, the Big Ben clocks? Okay, Quite hot. You can get instrument gauges. You can get clocks, you can get watches. Here's a, a clock with radium in it. These are actually radioactive, but if you look, if you think about this, folks, okay, radioactive here, but if I'm at my bedside with this clock, I'm not measuring anything. So is it safe? Sure, I'd have it by my bedside. I wouldn't sleep with it right up to my head necessarily, but these things are safe, in my opinion. Um, wrist watches, okay, wrist watches. Radioactive. Now it's not quite as hot because it doesn't get through the glass very well. I'm going to demonstrate that. Here's a, this one's a little hotter, this particular watch. Uh, the watch, the, the, although it won't stop any of the gamma rays, uh, some of the beta is getting through, but none of the alpha. Because this is measuring alpha, beta, gamma, and x-ray, this particular unit. Now here's an example with the face removed off of a, of a pocket watch. And this one literally a screamer, okay? Um, but, watch this, okay, screamer. Turn it around, now what's happened there? Very low. Well, the metal is blocking out the beta, the alpha and beta, and so you're only getting some gamma come through. So it's almost nothing here, but you turn it around, and we're screaming. So, that's why I wouldn't be afraid of wearing a wristwatch either, because on the face of it, you're getting radiation, but on the backside, where you're wearing it up against skin, virtually nothing. Misconceptions about radiation here. What else I got here? I got a lot of, a lot of little toys here. Uh, smoke detectors. Smoke detectors today, americium 241. 
inside the smoke detector. Here's what it looks like inside. All right, this is a particular one. Uh, this is the ion chamber, the ionization chamber where the americium-241 is, but nothing. Why? It's shielded. Basically, it's blocking all the beta and all the alpha. It's in, contained within units. So these are plenty safe as long as you don't break them open. Don't break open that ionization chamber. It's, more, it's about similar to radium if you were to break it open. I have seen people break them open. Wouldn't recommend it. But yes, almost all your smoke detectors in everybody's houses have americium-241. That's about the only thing you're going to find in today's homes that actually is radioactive to any kind of measurable degree if you were to break it open. But sealed like it is, you're getting nothing. You, know, you could sleep with a smoke detector under your pillow if you really wanted to, and it's not going to hurt you. Um, let's see what else we got here. Ah, this is always popular. Vaseline glass. Vaseline glass. Uh, these things are just rather cool. Vaseline glass you can get at antique stores. It's something that's uh, ma made into plates and figurines, in this case marbles and other things. The, the neat thing about these, now although they aren't very radioactive, very, very low. In fact, I know somebody in Virginia that does lectures about radiation. He actually swallows one of these during his lectures. I don't recommend that also, uh, to show how safe they are. Very low radiation, but the cool part about these, if you haven't seen them, and I'm not sure how it's going to show up in this light, but they luminesce under UV light. They have a, a particular glow to them that make them really interesting under UV light. What you have is uranium in the glass, and the glass is the, the UV light that I'm holding is illuminating the uranium in the glass, so they luminesce. So these are cool. A lot of people like these. They don't really do anything, but they're interesting to look at. Uh, what else I got here? I got some uranite in a particular type of, uh, this is in the case, but it's really quite hot when it's out. If you open it up and expose the uranite, the, it's actually quite a lot hotter. Uh, this, is a, this is a rarity. You're not likely to see this in any antique store, but um, lots of radioactive sources here. Don't really need to go into any more of them. Um, the point being, it's, it's fun to play with radiation, but if you want to play with radiation, you, do not, you, want, you have to have a Geiger counter, either like this or modern electronic ones. You do not want a survey meter because a survey meter, you will not measure anything with any of this stuff because there's nothing I can legally own to make the needles move on the survey meters anyway. So I'll call, call it quits for now. This is Craig from ForbiddenKnowledge.info or ThePrepperStop.com. So long.